Hi everyone, this is Ivan Rivera. I'm Math Product Director. Um, I'm really happy to be here and I hope you are doing great. Uh, today's question, if I train aerobically like uh, under my math heart rate and I also train anaerobically like strength and power, um, what is that going to mean for my aerobic development? Am I going to keep improving? Uh, what's going to happen? Right? Because the uh, second part of this question is that this person read that if you do a lot of anaerobic training, especially a lot of uh, a high volume of it, uh, that you are going to um, see your body stay in an anaerobic state for uh, over 48 hours. So is this true? Um, uh, what does this mean for me? And what should I do? What's the right answer? So it's actually a really good question. It's a very interesting question. And like most of the questions we discuss here, it has a lot of ins and outs. Uh, so let me start by the basics. The thing is that when you're training anaerobically, especially over um, a, a long period of time, um, what happens to a lot of your body's systems and processes is that they get dysregulated. So um, your breathing stops working just right, um, your internal organ function, your brain function, um, and so on and so on. And that state, uh, that's a very uh, unhealthy and it's a very, it's, it, it's, it's a stressed state. That's the state that um, endures for a period of about 48 hours. And it's when you're in that state, it's really just not conducive to um, uh, maintaining and improving your health and uh, improving your aerobic development, right? So that's what you have to avoid. In that same vein, the reason that staying under the math heart rate is important is because it minimizes stress, right? And um, just to show you how Staying under math isn't the be-all, end-all. Just look at many ultra runners. What you find in a lot of ultra run runners is that even though they do pretty much all of their training under the math heart rate, um, the volume of their training, the, the amount of miles and, and time they spend training is so great that sometimes their body simply can't take it, right? They start getting stressed out. They go into a chronically stressed state, often for months at a time, and then that eventually cascades into overtraining. Just to go a little further with that, um, for example, if you uh, are stressed in other areas of your life, um, you just won't improve um, aerobically. So, for example, if, you're, if your sleep is poor, if you're often exposed to household chemicals, um, if you have a, a very stressful work environment... Um, if you have uh, poor movement patterns or, or chronic pain, um, or even if you have negative self-talk, all of those things can contribute uh, to creating overall a very unhealthy living environment, right? So um, in, in an environment like that, the aerobic system isn't really in a position to develop because your body is just um, uh, focused on on, on, on resisting and, 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 and living through that stress and there's just no opportunity to grow. If things like this begin to dominate your living context, your aerobic development can quite simply grind to a halt simply because these things, especially when they come all together and all at once, they have so much more power over you than um, a few uh, barbell reps, uh, a few squats, and a few deadlifts here and there, right? So just just flip it around, right? If, if your sleep is excellent, if your household environment is free of chemicals, um, if you have a great work life, um, if you have excellent uh, movement patterns and excellent biomechanics, if you're free of chronic pain, if you've got great self-talk, um, and you're always um, being nice to yourself in many ways, that's an environment that's very, very um, uh, healthy, and it's and, and it and it con it's conducive to lowering your stress levels. And in an environment like that, um, it doesn't very little aerobic training uh, can really take root and begin to develop your aerobic system very, very quickly. Once you're in that positive situation um, and you're training under your math heart rate for for, for quite a bit, and your training's well balanced, um, and at that point, you insert some anaerobic training, um, even though that training is technically not conducive to the development of your aerobic system and, and will technically detract from it, um, everything that's supporting 
uh, uh, your 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 exercise and your training and your aerobic development is such that um, you're going to be able to continue to do this uh, anaerobic training and continue to do aerobic training with every expectation that you'll continue to improve aerobically, right? So just to recap, it's really stress that matters. Math training and keeping yourself under a certain heart rate is only really a small component of that, but you need to address all areas of your life if you really want your math training to work um, and if you want to be able to safely uh, add some anaerobic training with every expectation that you can continue to improve aerobically. That's it for today, and I really hope you enjoyed this answer. Um, and if you have any questions or comments for me or any suggestions, uh, just head down into the, into the comment section and let me know. Um, you can find us at filmaffetone.com or shoot us an email at burnfat at filmaffetone.com. Um, I'd love to hear from you, and until next time.